Hello everybody and welcome to Skyblock Survival. This episode I wish to be doing lots of little projects. I do have a bigger project in mind, but it will be requiring a lot of redstone. So I have been redesigning this witch hut here because before it took forever to get redstone and it's something I want to do anyways. So I will be, I've gone rid of all the trap doors and I will be switching to a shipping floor design. Alrighty, I got layer one done. Uh, it's a tileable thing, so I will continue it outwards soon, but I thought I'll show you this is, might as well now, then later, how it works. It is, like I said before, a shifting floor design, and it's set up so that when they trigger the tripwire, then a single slice will be shifting back and forth. And I guess we'll start with what happens when they trigger the tripwire. So... Over here, I actually got the machine turned off at the moment, so the floor is not actually shifting, but at the flick of that lever over there, it'll work. But basically, when I trigger the tripwire, this block gets powered, powers this piston, goes down, and allows the connection between here and that piston over there, which is the block over, to be made. And this redstone line here is actually going to be a clock that's turning on and off, so which makes this repair go on and off, so whenever this piston is down, this line will be going back and forth, all powered by this clock. Inside of here I got a 3 tick repeater, it's all covered up to prevent light, and most of this will have exactly zero light, except for the very edges will have a light level of 1 when the pistons are being fired, but only when the pistons are being fired. So, over here it's a very similar thing, it's actually a little bit smaller though, I don't have a repeater there and one less repeater here, and this one's on two tick instead of one. And the reason behind this is I want this one to fire before that one to fire. That one fires. So I, this piston has less of a delay because there isn't a repeater between this block and that piston. And so that way it'll always end up, the floor will always end in the same position as before. The use of all these iron bars are to keep the floor farther farther away from all the repeaters over there to try to prevent light from leaking in. And so, I mean, normally you would have comparators there, which I don't have, which emit no light, but since I don't, I'm just trying to keep the repeaters as far as possible. And that is how this works. Now I will show you it in action. This is just the clock over here. Oh, and over here I got pulse shortener so that otherwise the pistons won't be able to fire back and forth. They need, it can't be just opposite pulses on both sides. But, yeah, look at that, as long as I'm standing here, the floor will keep shifting back and forth until I get off. And that's all there is to it. Next, I will continue making the entire floor. Alrighty, I finished the bottom layer. Let me just turn this off, this is so long. But, yeah, it's completely working, and I've put a giant roof up here, so everything here is at light level zero, at least when the pistons aren't being fired. And all these layers work, and if I go down there right now, it'll run. I haven't done the top layer yet, and partly because I'm out of redstone, so the next thing I want to build is a collection system. So right now it's just slapped off, so no one just spawn there. And I could demonstrate it quickly with a piece of cobblestone, I guess. Yeah, there we go. So, now I guess we can go down and see an action. I've also slapped up all the redstone, so it's really hard to go and mess with that now. And any second now? Ooh, there we go. So that's that so far. Now I'm going to want to start building the collection system. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to change all this smooth stone to half slabs. And then under that I'll have hopper minecarts go back and forth and collect the stuff. And I haven't designed how I want to do that yet, so I'm going to have to go and test, go into test world and play around with that first. But that should be the next thing you see. I have got the collection floor set up. And except I still need to add a layer of slabs, which I haven't done yet, so that you could actually see it. And a few more hopper minecarts. But it's 
pretty simple. The hopper minecarts just go across, collect the stuff, and then drop it off at the, these hoppers here. And it might not drop it all off in one go if it clicked at a ton, but over time I'll eventually get rid of it. And then it all goes to this chest, which I still need to pipe somewhere else, otherwise they'll fill up very quickly. And then this thing just runs by timer here. And I have a lever here so I can turn it off if I wanted to whenever I wanted. But that's this thing now. I'll just go ahead and put some slabs there and then continue working on floor number two. I finished the second layer to the farm. It's basically the same as the first layer, but sideways this time. And a little more light does leak in every time you hit the tripwires because there's more distance with the blocks being pushed. But for the most part, it's all the same. And if you look over here, I've also added a bunch of lamps here. This will keep all mobs from spawning when I don't want them to. So if we come down to the bottom, case in. A. There we have an on-off switch, which will also stop the minecarts from going under there. And then all the witches start falling. And you're probably wondering who this person over here is. So um. I... Yeah. So I've turned this into a server. A private whitelisted server. And Sen has been the first I've asked to come play. And so now he's been helping me build some things. Like this building over here. Which he would gladly like to explain right now. Yes, it's a fishing farm. The design is by Panda4994. Which um, you can see if you click the annotation on the screen right now or in the video description. Yes, so it it dispenses automatically fishing rods, which you then try to where you then try to pull it out. And then it activates a tripwire which closes the door and if if a fish bites, it gets down and the tripwire gets activated again and the door opens so that you can hook it. Let's just show this quickly in action. So here I have the fishing rod in so the door stays closed. So right clicking does nothing. But as soon as I catch a fish, which is hopefully soon, then the bobber will go right above the water, hit the tripwire and open the door which lets me reel it in. Oh, and I was supposed to fill my inventory with stuff first, so I don't collect a bunch of fishing rods from the auto fishing rod dispenser. Okay, now we've got... We've also got don't. a bunch of animals lying around here. Maybe you want to explain that also. Yes, we have grass over here, so that if we stand AFK here, when we collect witch drops or fish, we get some peaceful mobs to spawn, and then we just catch them. Yep. And also, the grass, since it's in a swamp biome, it let us get some blue flowers when we bone yield it. For some reason, the grass works over here, but not in the original place. So, so that's why we got tons of animals. Don't Let's you want to show the loot we got from the fishing farm? Oh, yeah. So it's a very ugly storage system right now. But, yeah. This is where all the, these five chests are where all the stuff gets piped into, and then you have to manually sort it into different various chests around here. And it gives us way more than we need of anything. I don't know what we would possibly do with that many bottles. <laughs> uh, Probably toss them in the void. Eventually. Now let's now show a uh, project Sen's been working on for a while. That's uh, AFK Spider Farm, and we'll just quickly hop over there. And there it is! So we have an uh, on-off lever here, which turns a bunch of lamps on inside. And basically the only thing that'll spawn here are spiders as long as... And spider as jockeys. All. Oh, and spider jockeys. What? Let's, let's go up and look at the insights. Can we get inside? Yeah. Oh, 
we should have turned it off. Wait, I'm gonna go down. Crap. Now I'll craft a quick lever here. Okay, it's off. Okay, there's the bottom. Okay, you can see here is a one and a half block. There. <laughs> one and a half block opening? Yes. Air area something? <laughs> Ceiling. Ceiling. So, because the spiders are only one block tall, they can spawn in there, but other mobs can. And then? And then they just fall into this water current and to their doom. Yes. I'm falling down. Alright. What you just saw was us building this giant mob grinder here. 
It's a simple design, very similar to the old Enderman mob grinders, where the mobs spawn up there, pistons push them down, and they fall through their doom. And now, I think we'll go and explain all the little details of how it works now. Let's start at the top. Okay, so here's the inside of it. What we just have is tripwire going all the way down. And when they spawn, they hit the tripwire and then triggers this redstone, pushes the pistons. It does have an on off switch, which powers a torch tower on each side, lighting all the redstone, extending all the pistons, and making it impossible for mobs to spawn. Yeah, over here we have a crusher that's um, in normal mode, it's always extended. And if some, some mobs fall down, they activate the tripwire. And then the pistons will open for a short moment, and then get, and then the mobs that survive get crushed in there. Yeah. So here we are. The drop would normally kill them all, except we have problems with things like chicken jockeys and armored zombies. And me. How do I get out? <laughs> there we go. Trap yourself. Alright, I think that's all there is to this. Oh, well, let's show the yeah. storage. Yeah. So, it all funnels down here into our temporary little storage where we can click all the drops. We've actually started just throwing everything away except Ender Pearls because we've got so much of it all. If we go to these chests here, it's just packed with items that we're never going to be able to use this much stuff, ever. So here we have the Iron Foundry from last episode, and I've made a couple changes to this. Firstly, I've added this FNS storage system. I believe Minecraft PG5 came up with this. Basically we have a bunch of minecart with chests in this one area, and this hopper points them all, and then this hopper sucks them all out of it. So you can collect as much iron as you want from this chest. But, I've stopped using it because it's just been giving way too much iron. And I've just, right now it's all just been despawning. And it was going to happen eventually, but we, we've got way too much of it, as you can see from all these chests. There's no way we're ever going to burn through this anytime soon. And so I've stopped trying to just convert it all and just let it despawn. Second change, and more importantly, we've had a major problem with this. The pistons down there, and the lo most of the time in the timer, have been converted to block 36 every once in a while. Which effectively makes them stop working. And when the timer stops working, Poppy stops shooting through the portal, making it so the system can't stay on, and as soon as the chunks unloaded after that, the foundry's broken, you either need to revert to a backup, or put down all the doors again. So, I've built a little alarm system here, and I'll just go and trigger it right now to demonstrate it. But what happens is, so here's our poppy storage, and it's all full, and basically the poppies, after they get sorted out, they go through all the different hoppers and stuff and pass over them, and they all end up right here. And they despawn here. And if for whatever reason poppies stop farming, then they'll all despawn here. And then after five minutes, the alarm will go off. And you can hear it now. And along with that, we do have flashing lights up there that really don't get much of attention. And I used to actually put fireworks in a dispenser that would continually go, but I've stopped doing that because that gets expensive. And normally this wouldn't be a problem. It's not the most reliable alarm because it does have a 5 minute wait that if you happen to unload the chunks before those 5 minutes happen when those lines spawn, then it sucks to be you. And also sometimes it just makes false alarms. So here's the alarm. Basically we have a quick clock that just happens here that triggers this note block. And then there's another clock up here that will trigger that dispenser and these lights. So here we have a simple garbage collector thing that we're using right now just to throw away the poppies because we get so many as we go through the portal. And so all it does is just 
dumps the poppies into the void. And we'll figure out something better some other time, but probably like another nether portal somewhere else that just fills in the void automatically. Over here is a cobstone dinner that Sin has made for us. Well, ex explain how it works. Yeah, if you mine the blocks, the redstone gets turned off, and, and then it sends a pulse to these pistons, and then cobblestone gets transported over here again, and then shuts the redstone back on. That's a great way to AFK mine. Over here we just have another one of these auto pickaxe dispenser things, like we had in the old design. But now for the real fun, the block transmutation. Over here we can turn any block into any other block, except it's been patched in the newest version of Minecraft, but luckily we aren't in that. So I think we can still do it in this version. Yeah, we can show it. Yeah, but here are all the different blocks we can obtain with it. And including some blocks you're not supposed to be able to get, like these double slab quartz and stone slab things, sandstone. But it's also how we were getting spruce trees over there. The, if you saw the double white spruce tree, that's how we did it. And it let us get vines because jungle trees, when they grow, they give you vines. Yeah, we transmutated the leaves of oak into spruce and jungle, and then we destroyed them and some dropped saplings. Alright, so this is a double AFK machine. If we're both AFK at it, it'll make tons of whatever we want over here and make a giant block of it. it we never fine-tuned it too well, so some of them still mess up, but let's go ahead and use it. Three, two, one, go. So here it is working. He puts. Okay, yeah, I must have put eight in. Oh, I'm not picking up the Okay. So he just puts down the blocks. And then I put the pressure plate down. And it turns into whatever however many arrows we put in there. Now it's not always perfect, and that's probably some flaws with the redstone design here. But it's, as you can see, it's turning into sandstone. Or wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not perfect. And we probably could have fine-tuned it more, but cobblestone is turning into all sorts of things. The stuff comes and transports over this way. It's kind of funny. And then it basically turns into this wall that will get to it. Yeah, so over time they'll fill up this piston wall and then the whole block will be pushed over. And it's mostly sandstone, so now we can go ahead and mine it and get all the stuff we want. And I think that'll wrap it up for this episode, so... Thanks for watching, and tune in next time because we've actually already got a lot of stuff done for next episode.